Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's first video to the ECFDF uh, 30 day forecast for today's first video uh, for the UK and for the rest of uh, Europe as well. I shall get on back for you very shortly. Uh, this is a, a four week 30 day uh, look ahead. Uh, we will show you weeks five and six data uh, within that as well. But remember the sort of forecast period of this is like for the next uh, four weeks. But the model does extend out to um, to, to like six weeks. So, so while we're doing this, we might as well show you. Uh, the rest of the uh, data week for weeks five and week six. I shall get on that for you. Make sure to say that later on today we're going to have a 10 to 14 day update, which will include all our regular features. So uh, check that out later on this afternoon. Thank you so much to e7.int for supplying uh, the charts. Let's get on with it then. So we're going to start off with the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly. Uh, taking us from the 1st through to the 8th of March. The coming week across uh, North Europe will be dominated by high pressure, high pressure ridging through the west of Europe and into some central and even southeastern parts of Europe as well. It's a big ridge of high pressures, a cold trough of low uh, up to the far northeast of Europe. So it's so a winter digging in in the very far northeast. But most parts of Europe are dominated by this mild ridge but will bring a lot of uh, fine weather and generally quite mild weather too. There's some lower pressure down towards Spain, Portugal and North Africa, interestingly. 500 millibar height anomaly uh, looks like that. So most parts of Europe dominated by high pressure, the ridge extending uh, through the north, west and central part of Europe. Coldest weather is in the northeast uh, with this deep trough of low pressure digging in uh, from the Arctic down into the far northeast Europe and the uh, west of Russia. We also have this trough of low pressure down towards Spain and Portugal. But these are the exceptions to the rule. Most places are dominated by the large ridge. So it's a pretty mild scene across most parts of the Europe today. It's a little bit cooler than average around the UK and Ireland. And in the far northeast and east of Europe, it's quite a lot colder there running down uh, the uh, down the far eastern side of uh, Europe. Most places are mild though, particularly through the western and southwest there, so uh, Spain, uh, Portugal, up into France, into some parts of Germany, a lot of mild weather there, and many parts of Scandinavia significantly milder than average. As I say, it's a little bit cooler for the UK and Ireland, that's because we're going to bring in like a colder easterly flow uh, later on in the week. So, so it's a little bit colder in the extreme northwest, but most places are average or milder than average at about ridge of high pressure. And of course, with rich, uh, there's a lot of dry weather around as well, with some exceptions. So, uh, northern parts of Scandinavia, especially like Norway, uh, it, it, a bit wetter than average through there, a little bit wetter than average in the far northeast, and down across some parts of Spain into North Africa, interestingly, quite wet there with some big thunderstorms. The exceptions to rule, though, most places are dry of an average under that large ridge of high pressure all the way from either the UK in the west over to west of Russia and the Black Sea uh, in the east. Mediterranean wise, again, a lot of dry weather uh, through the Med, especially the central and eastern part of Mediterranean and over the Adriatic into the Balkans. Northern Spain, southern France, also quite dry, really is down across the south of Spain. But it's a little bit on wetter side. Temperature wise for the Med, which I did not speak about, um, mostly mild and average through the central western part of Med, a little bit cooler in the southeastern corner of the Mediterranean. Right, that's uh, week one done. Let's have a look at uh, week two then, shall we? So this takes us from the 8th through to the 15th of March. Big change, look at this. Total change from week one to week two. Large area of low pressure suddenly takes over across most of northern West Europe. And it's a huge change in, in just like uh, one week to another. Um, so, yeah, much more unsettled, obviously. Low pressure driving in off the Atlantic. High pressure sort of collapsed back into the uh, middle of the Atlantic. And also... Uh, over towards the, the west of Russia, but but low pressure really takes over there uh, now through the second week of March, which the ECM hasn't really signalled, I don't think, up to this point. So, you know, quite a quite a change. We've got a 500 millibar height anomaly all of a sudden for the second week of March. This was not indicated by the ECM at all, really. I don't think. Uh, you know, in previous updates. So, all of a sudden, the ridge sort of collapses away to the west and in comes the low pressure. And obviously, there's a big strengthening 
of the jet stream as well. It just looks as though most parts of Europe are turning very unsettled there into the second week of March. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. It does go rather cool across the northern and west parts of Europe. That's probably because the jet stream is shifting southwards a bit. Uh, so, so northern Scandinavia goes cool on average. I of the UK, cooler than average. Still a bit mild on average through like eastern uh, Germany into Poland. Uh, those sort of areas, and down to Med, still reasonably mild there, but I think there is a bit of a reduction, certainly for western parts of Europe in the temperature, and it's still quite chilly in the far east and southeast of Europe as well, that's left over from the current uh, colder weather that's going on uh, this week, but but a bit of a reduction in the temperature, and quite cool to cold for northern and northwestern parts of Europe, and you would expect it to be a lot more unsettled, of course, so look at that, uh, really does flip from those driving average conditions in week one, to significantly now wetter than average conditions through many parts of northern and western uh, Europe. So Scandinavia goes wetter than average. That, that would be snow, of course, primarily. Um, down into Germany, into the low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, into France, going wetter than average. Ida, the UK, wetter than average. Um, colder than average temperature anomalies. There could be a little bit of wintry potential into parts of the UK and Ireland there in the second week. More about that in today's um, second video update. Down into the Mediterranean, uh, we've got wet and average conditions like through the east part of Med, over the Adriatic into Balkans, down into Greece and Turkey too. Drier conditions still across southern parts of uh, Spain and Portugal. Definitely, definitely, definitely a more unsettled week there for the second week of uh, March. Week 3 is the 15th, 22nd of March. Another change uh, taking place now. <coughs> Excuse me. So lower pressure is being pushed towards the north and east of Europe. That's going to be a cold trough, I would have thought, digging down the eastern side of Europe again. Uh, a ridge is just out to the west uh, of the UK and Ireland. And that will be bringing him a wind from like a northwesterly direction. So probably still quite cool. Not as unsettled, but probably still quite cool, actually, for many uh, western parts of Europe. Though the coldest temps I think will be in the east and the northeast. Let's look at the 500 millibar height anomaly. That's how it looks. So again, you can see the trough digging down through the northeast and the eastern part of Europe. Meanwhile, we have a ridge out in the west. Um, Flamer jets doing something uh, a little bit like that. Let's have a look at the week three temperature anomaly. So they're getting milder to the west uh, of the UK and Ireland. So beginning to draw up like a southwesterly, uh, doing something a little bit like that. Now, where I thought it would be cooler with batch off low pressure in the east, it's actually milder than average, which I'm a little bit surprised about. Um, but that's what model is showing anyway. Uh, milder over on the east side of Europe, a little bit milder out to the northwest. This area in between, presumably, is quite cool from like Scandinavia down to Italy. Um, you know, there, down to there. Uh, you will think that area is quite cool with, with the warmest weather, like, over on the east side of Europe. So I suppose the jet would be doing something uh, a little bit like that. The trough is through there, and then the ridge rises uh, through there, perhaps. So, so low pressure through here, a ridge through there, and a ridge over there. That's the only way I can explain a temperature anomaly. Um, Precipitation-wise, uh, we look like this for week three. Wettest conditions are being moved over towards the eastern side of Europe, which would imply the trough is moving eastward, should be taking the cooler air with it, going a little bit drier out to uh, the northwest. So further out we go, the weaker seals are going to get, of course. This is week four, final week of our 30-day forecast, 22nd, 29th of uh, March. So signs of a little bit of northern blocking coming back this week. High pressure beginning to uh, appear around Greenland and Iceland, still with the trough. Uh, of low pressure over on the eastern side of Europe. High pressure down towards uh, Spain and Portugal, so probably mild in the west of Europe, although we will have to watch out for the, the northern blocking to try and pull in cold winds from the north. But again, I would have thought the coldest temperatures are probably over on the east side of Europe, again, with that trough of low. Uh, 500 millibar height anomaly uh, looks like that. So uh, again, uh, we've got the trough of low pressure, Across many northern and eastern, northeast parts of Europe. Mid Atlantic Ridge going up towards uh, some green and blocking would imply many parts of Europe are probably within a northerly or northeasterly flow, so probably quite cool, if anything. 
Week 4 temperature anomaly actually does look quite cold, especially so for Scandinavia, but for many northern western parts of Europe. It's been a bit of a delayed spring, I have to say, uh, for, for northern and western Europe on this update. Mildest weather now is in the far east and southeast of Europe. Um, it seems to go a little bit colder, like through Germany and Poland and France, for example. So, so quite a cold end to March. Um, precipitation wise, uh, looks like that. Weakening signals as ever. A little bit drier than average across the northwest Europe from Scandinavia down to uh, Spain and Portugal. Uh, wet and average from Germany eastwards. Uh, so, so from there over towards west of Russia, generally above average precipitation. As you know, the 30-day forecast, I'll just uh, read through weeks 5 and 6 data very quickly. So week 5, 29th of March to 5th of April, looks like that. Ridge of high pressure appearing across the west of Europe. That will probably turn things drier and milder at commencement of spring through particularly western parts of Europe with that ridge of high pressure drawing up milder air from the south. You expect the temperature to lift up in western Europe, not really. Um, but I think with that ridge uh, in western Europe, it would be turning uh, milder. No particular signal for uh, precipitation. And then uh, week six, which is the 5th through to the 12th of April, means cell pressure anomaly. Again, virtually no signal by this point. We're six weeks out, so as ever, the, the signals get ever weaker. Looks like high pressure is more central in the middle of the Atlantic. Again, mid-Atlantic ridge would probably imply cooler weather digging back into the northwest Europe once more. Temperature anomalies uh, for week six. Uh, again, look like that. Very weak signals, but nothing overly warm uh, showing up, really. And uh, week six precipitation anomaly looks like that. Again, very, very weak signals. Right, so that's it for uh, this week's 30-day uh, forecast. So it looks like we have, got, we have got quite a cool, changeable sort of march uh, on the way here for uh, many parts of uh, Europe. It looks like we could have a bit, bit of a delayed spring. There will be milder weather at times. We do see some milder weather coming and going, especially the first week. And, uh, you know, uh, again, I think it's week three. Um, but, but overall, quite a, quite, a, quite a cool, quite a changeable march. And uh, maybe a little bit of wintry potential as well, even for western parts of Europe. Uh, right, so that's that one done. That later on your 10 to 14 days, so come back for that then. For the ECM WF 30-day look at, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.